Alkaline hydrolysis of methyl acetate. Attention, in this experiment dangerous compounds are used. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the replication of this experiment. In the beginning the apparatus was made of a hot plate, a three-necked round bottom flask with a steering bar and a Dimroth condenser. First, 130 milliliters of distilled water were added to the flask. Before the next step, the pump for the cooling water was turned on to make sure that vapors could condense if needed. Then the stirrer was turned on and 60 grams of potassium hydroxide were added. When potassium hydroxide dissolves in water, a lot of heat is released so the water, or more precisely the potassium hydroxide solution, could begin to boil in the worst case. After that the flask alone already had a temperature of 70 degrees C on the outside. Then the flask was held into a water bath to cool it more quickly and later on cool the reaction mixture. For the reaction a thermometer and a pressure equalizing dropping funnel were added to the flask. The main point in this case is that the hydroxide solution doesn't become too hot and begins to boil. The temperature was already below 30 degrees C but ice was added to the water bath to lower the temperature even more. It was left until the temperature was at 15 degrees C. This is just about getting a good distance to the boiling point of methyl acetate but also prevent that the reaction becomes too slow. 70 milliliters of methyl acetate were added to the dropping funnel. The methyl acetate was added relatively fast and the temperature was observed closely. The solution became cloudy due to the finely divided methyl acetate. The temperature didn't go above 28 degrees C so the speed of the addition was increased several times but it never went above 31 degrees C. That's why the ester could possibly also be added in portions. In the alkaline hydrolysis, the ester is attacked by a hydroxide ion as a nucleophile. After an intermediate step, the alcoholate is removed leaving the carbonic acid. This is deprotonated by the alcoholate and an alcohol and the carboxylate are formed. In summary, the methyl acetate reacts with the potassium hydroxide to form potassium acetate and methanol. At the end the temperature was at 31 degrees C. This was way lower than the boiling point of methanol so the apparatus was detached immediately and it was set up for simple distillation. The smell of methyl acetate could not be noticed which indicated a complete hydrolysis. The distillation apparatus was made of a hot plate stirrer, a water bath, a round bottom flask with a distillation bridge a thermometer and a receiving flask. Due to the water bath only compounds could be distilled that have a lower boiling point than water. The mixture was transferred to the new round bottom flask which was then connected to the distillation bridge. Methanol has its boiling point at 64.7 degrees C and is distilled off at first. Interestingly the temperature went to 72 degrees C at the beginning which was above both boiling points of methanol and methyl acetate and below the boiling point of water. 
In the distillation the temperature went further up and reached its maximum slightly above 78 degrees C, which is exactly the boiling point of ethanol. After 3 hours the distillation came to an end and the heat was removed. Fifteen point three grams of raw product were obtained, and after that the refractive index was determined with a refractometer. The refractive index was at one point three three six, which was already close to the literature value of methanol. It has to be considered that the value should be around 0 0.002 higher due to the temperature of 19 degrees C in the lab. Before the raw product was distilled again, two tests were done. Methanol should burn very clean and without a visible flame. And it should react with boric acid to form the ester trimethyl borate without the addition of another acid. Then a simple distillation was set up and the raw product was distilled again. In this case an oil bath was used, but a water bath would work the same. Here the temperature was at 65 degrees C for a longer period of time. Later the temperature went above 65 degrees C, which is why the distillation was interrupted and the first fraction was collected. The maximum temperature of the distillate was at 71 degrees C before the temperature dropped again. The refractive indices of both fractions were determined and both were exactly at or very close to the point of methanol considering the temperature in the lab. That's why both were put together. This means that 12 grams of methanol were obtained in total which corresponds to a yield of 42%. A reason for the low yield might be that in the first distillation the methanol cannot be distilled off completely. The concentration of the hydroxide solution could be increased, but this would also cause it to attack the glassware more. By boiling down the residual solution of the first distillation, potassium acetate can be obtained very easily, but I didn't need it. The methyl acetate can be substituted by most esters, so the corresponding alcohols and potassium salts of the acid can be obtained. This was the alkaline hydrolysis of methyl acetate. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment. If you want to see the esterification of formic acid and ethanol, you can watch my video here, or you can watch my latest video here. A big thanks to my supporters on Patreon.